Hi everybody, I'm Graham Blackburn and this is traditional woodworking by hand. The reason for doing it by hand is many fold, but one of the more important reasons is that unless you're making hundreds of a particular thing, you can actually do something better by hand. And one of the ways that you can do things better is by using what we call a smooth plane. And this is actually the last tool that most people use when they've made a nice piece of furniture or done something with wood. And it's called a smooth plane because its function is to make the piece of wood smooth. Now, most of the time you're using regular wood and you take a shaving and you get a shaving come out and the wood is nice and smooth. And that happens very easily if the grain is regular and all goes in one direction. But if you're making a really nice piece of furniture and you're using a piece of figured wood, then what makes it figured is that the grain is going in all sorts of directions. Here's an example of a piece of wood that has a really nice figure. And if you move this around and you look at it, you'll see that the light penetrates the wood and reflects off at different angles and creates an effect with the fancy name of chatoyance. So how does the smooth plane do that? Well, first of all, let's look at some of the smooth planes that you might run into. Here's one that's typical of the kind of plane that's been used for the last three, four hundred years. It's called a wooden coffin smooth plane. Around the turn of the century, Stanley invented the tool, and this is probably the one that most people are familiar with, and this is a regular Stanley smooth plane. It's about the same length, does the same job. At the same time, high-end furniture makers, who always want something a little better, they invented a plane like this. So this is the one that we're going to be using today, and I'll show you how and why it works. Nowadays, with the increased interest in hand woodworking again, once again, we have another kind of smooth plane, and this is a contemporary plane made at least twice as well as the Stanley plane. But they all have two things in common that we're going to talk about today. So let's look at what happens when you plane a piece of wood. Not difficult, right? But I want you to notice that although the blade is two and a quarter inches wide, the shaving is much narrower than that. And that's because I want this surface to be smooth. And as a result, I've adjusted the plane so that the edges of the shaving, no matter how thin it is in the, in the middle, maybe just a thousandth of an inch, they disappear to nothing. Here's a shaving, you can see. And it, you can see right through it in the middle, but you can see how it disappears to nothing on either edge. So how do we do that? Well, let's take one of these planes apart. So, as I said, there's two things that make a smooth plane work. And the first thing is that the sole of the plane, that's the underneath, has to be perfectly flat for the fairly obvious reason that you can't plane anything flatter than the flatness of the plane itself. So how do you do that? Well, in the old days, when we all used wooden planes, it was easy. A little bit of a catch-22, but you simply put the plane in the vise, and then you took another plane that you had nicely tuned up, and you simply planed the wood perfectly flat. Now, obviously, you can't do that with any of these metal planes, but it's still a very important thing. So whatever kind of plane you may have, whether it's a regular Stanley plane, whether it's a contemporary high-end Lee Nielsen plane, or whether it's a turn-of-the-century Norris plane, the first thing to do is to make sure the sole is flat. It's very easy how to do that. Take a piece of quarter-inch plate glass, Put a piece of 80 grit carborundum paper, wet or dry paper. Retract the blade and simply rub the plane backwards and forwards on that abrasive paper. And when you can see 
that the scratches cover the entire sole of the plane, you know the plane is flat. It's that simple. Whether you're using your Norris plane, your Stanley plane, or your Lee Nielsen plane, the sole of the plane has to be flat. The next thing that you have to do is to make sure that the mouth of the plane is no bigger than the thickness of the shaving that you want to take. Now, what does that mean? What's the mouth? The mouth is simply the hole in the bottom of the plane where the blade sticks through. And you don't want to have any bigger gap between the cutting edge and the front of the front part of the sole than the thickness of the shaving. If you make this gap too wide, then you're, especially when you're planing wood that has grain that goes all over the place, you're likely liable to get tear out. So how do we do that? Well, on one of these planes, it was easy. After you planed the bottom perfectly flat, you necessarily reduce the thickness of the plane. You simply, at a certain point, cut out a little space and insert another piece of wood that comes right up close to the back of the blade. One of the reasons that Stanley planes became popular was because you, you can't obviously cut out a piece of steel, but they made a plane so that if you take the iron out, this piece that supports the blade is known as the frog. And if you look very carefully at this plane, you can see there's a nut in there. And by loosening the two screws that hold this piece to the plane, you can then turn this and you can move this forward or back until when the plane is assembled that you once again you have a mouth that is no thicker than the thickness of the shaving that you want to take and that's exactly the same thing albeit it's done in a little more carefully engineered way with the contemporary high-end planes so that's, those are the two things that you have to remember if you want your smooth plane to do the job that it has to do. The third thing, which we'll talk about in the next installment, is how do you actually get the blade, or the iron as it's properly called, sharp. So we'll do that. So stay tuned, make sure to click the subscribe button and click the little bell, and next time I'll show you how to sharpen the blade really easily.